In this module, we'll discuss thoracic spine x-rays. We'll review AP and lateral views. Now, before you bring your patient into the room, you're going to want to make sure you do as much preparation work as possible, and that includes inputting your patient demographics into your digital system, if that's what you're using, or you want to make sure that your paperwork is in order. You'll also want to input your techniques for the first examination, whether that be an AP and a lateral. And then you'll also want to make sure that your camera is lined up with your upright bucky. And yes, we'll be utilizing the upright bucky for this uh, series. However, you can do these, this examination on the table if need be, but it is significantly easier to do it at the upright bucky. Uh, when we talk about centering the camera with the upright bucky, you want to make sure that your crosshairs are uh, center of the bucky itself, w uh, whether you utilize whatever markers the bucky has on it, but you're going to want to be centered horizontally and vertically and have your film loaded up for the first film. You're going to need uh, 14 by 17 film, which is the same size as a regular chest x-ray cassette loaded into your bucky if you do indeed use cassettes. Now the AP thoracic spine, it simulates a chest x-ray. It's virtually the same thing, except we're not shooting from uh, post, uh, posterior to anterior. We're shooting anterior to posterior or front to back. We're preferably using 40 inches at the upright bucky with a grid. And you can see in the yellow areas, this is where the essential anatomy is located between the manubrial notch, which is right there just below the throat, and then uh, just below the belly button is where you're going to want to include your light. Your crosshairs are centered right at a virtual intersection of the midline, which is where the sternum is, you know, the bony portion right in between your pecs and the belly button. That's the central line there. And then the crosshair, uh, the horizontal nipple line. This is right along the nipple line. You see that intersection? That's where we're going to center. A good technique starting off with this examination is 20 mass at 66 KUB, uh, KBP. Now, looking at it on the table, just like we had said, it is indeed possible to shoot the x-ray on the table. So this is what it looks like. Notice the centering point is exactly what we just said in the previous image. You're at 40 inches. You've got the patient on the table. You've centered your bucky, and uh, you've closed your collimators uh, just inside the nipple line, and you're centered to the nipple line and midline. Here's an example of an x-ray of the thoracic spine. You'll want to start your count. Make sure you get all of the ver vertebra associated with the thoracic spine included. You just look for the uh, C7, if you can see it, and then right below C7, it's got those transverse processes that are so pronounced right there. They look like ears sticking out. That's where the, essentially the thorax starts. We count down according to each squared body shape. Now, these vertebrae are a little bit different shaped than the cervical vertebra. The cervicals are a little bit uh, significantly different than all the other vertebrae in the body, but just count these as little squares with tiny little ears associated with them. We count all the way down, one, two, three, four, five, all the way down to 12. It's T1 through T12. All the cervical vertebra have ribs attached to them. You'll know that you've got all of the thoracic vertebra included when you reach down to the level one, the lumbar one level and see here there's a transverse process but no rib associated with it. So we have achieved all of the vertebra in this picture perfectly and we've collimated closer in inside the nipple lines to include this uh, beautiful picture of a spine. Now we've darkened the same image and lightened the same image so that you can understand well, the appropriate technique that you want to have in here. You want to you want a, a black and white image but you want to have it so that you can delineate the intervertebral disc spaces as well as the vertebra themselves Look at this. It's very difficult to determine uh, where the vertebra are, uh, how to count them, and much less. We can't see the, the, uh, the, the bony formations or anything very clearly at all. So you want to give the radiologist a half a chance to be able to identify uh, abnormalities in the film. As well as look on the right-hand side, see how wide out that is. You have to be able to penetrate the 
vertebra so that you can see straight through it, see the disc spaces, and be able to count the appropriate uh, vertebra as needed. Now again, I just wanted to indicate, you can see those uh, transverse processes, those help us to identify if we've actually gone down far enough to include in our picture. Now for the lateral thoracic spine, I have included the lateral image as well, simply because it's hard to visualize what we're trying to achieve unless you're looking at these two side by side. The thoracic spine extends to the posterior most part of the body. Um, oops, didn't mean to include that. Let's go back. Here we go. So when you're shooting the x-ray, you want to center your central uh, line or your, your, your crosshairs at the tickle line. Remember the tickle line? You know exactly where to tickle somebody. If you're going to walk up to them, tickle them in the ribs. And then you're going to center right at where the armpits are. So you're looking for that region right there. Make sure the patient is standing with shoulder, feet shoulder width apart, their arms up in the air, they're still as possible, and their scapulas are perpendicular to the actual plate itself. Notice how the collimator light opens up all the way up into their neck, and then it's going to open up further down uh, below, but as long as you are centering just below the armpits and at the tickle line, you're going to get as much as you need. We're at 40 inches at the upright bucky, and you want to make sure that you include all of that, this area behind her. So you can get that full lump, uh, thoracic spine included. And a good technique for the lateral uh, thoracic spine is 30 mass at 72 kvp. Now, if you're still wondering about the anatomy, I just wanted to give you a good idea of what it looks like. You can see the cervical vertebra here with the, uh, the floating um, uh, ver uh, the floating hyoid bone there. But here we have in red the thoracic spine. It goes down. It, it has the, uh, the uh, rib cage associated with it. And then, of course, the rib cage terminates and we move on into the lumbar spine. You can see the countdown of here. I I'm going to forewarn you up front. Oftentimes, it's very difficult to count from T1 just because a lot of the artifact and a lot of the bones that come into play, a lot of people have thick shoulders and the technique sometimes doesn't warrant for it, but you got to get as much as you can. Here we've got T2. Oftentimes what I'll do is I'll look for L1 down here. I'll look for a fat spinous process back here. See that big fat spinous process shaped like a thick uh, tail? Uh, that indicates, you know, it's significantly larger than the next one up. So we go T12, T11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, all the way down or all the way up to T1 as far as we can go. I also look for the front portion of these lines. This is often the easiest way to, to start. Make sure you get your line included there. A good lateral thoracic spine is very much like a, um, a lateral chest x-ray. You, if you can, you want to include the spinous processes back here. If you have ribs that are coming back here, they look like they round out, they come out here, make sure you don't have too much of that because too much of that will constitute a repeat. So this is pretty much what you're looking for to achieve a lateral thoracic spine. And that concludes our evaluation and review of thoracic spine x-rays.